Hey friends, I'm super excited because today we're going to take a look at Touchable Pro. It's a control script for Ableton Live that you can run on your iPhone, but more ideally like on your iPad. And it has the kind of control that is similar to a controller like Ableton Push where you can access many, if not most, of Ableton's functions from the controller itself. Okay, so look how cool I am. I figured out how to capture the screen of my iPad. So here we are looking at the interface of Touchable Pro and this is Ableton Session View. And as you can see, I can launch clips or launch scenes, for example. And then at the top, I have these transport controls so I can play, stop, right? I have the arrangement record button. I can turn the metronome on and off. There is a monitor volume for the cue out. There is a quantization menu. There's undo, redo. It just goes on forever. It's pretty much everything that you can access within Ableton's top bar, okay? So I really find that interesting. Now, we're gonna skip all the way over to here where you can see I can actually access my user library and drag in devices, okay? So this is what I mean by this starting to crest over into the kind of control that you could get with Ableton Push where you can add and subtract devices right here on the interface, right? That's pretty freaking amazing. Over here, you can see how it connects to the computer. And what's cool is that it actually shows you the round trip latency of the different styles of connections. Obviously, USB is gonna be the snappiest connection. And what I wanna show you is that if you're using USB, for example, you can get some incredibly snappy control. Okay, so I'm gonna skip ahead just a little bit and we're gonna go down to this page, which shows a little bit of how you can play instruments. Okay, and so here I am looking at track one. And that's super fast, right? If I switch back over to the air connection, you can see that it's a little bit latent. So you get to the choice between a USB connection or a standard Wi-Fi connection. Now, if you were just doing uh, some mixing and stuff like that, you could just use this with Wi-Fi, and that's what's really awesome about this. Like another thing, for example, that I think having a wireless controller that is really nice for is let's say you want to do some EQing, okay? So I know that I'm skipping around a lot, but if I go to the device parameter control right here and I look at the EQ8, you can see that this is showing me all my devices. If I click on EQ8 here, I now have an EQ8. And let's say I want to walk around my room a little bit and mess with the low end, right? This is a great way to do that. I can just pick up the iPad, switch it over to Wi-Fi mode, right? Click on my EQ and then start messing with a little bit of EQ. Right off the bat, I hope you see like some of the amazing potential with this app, right? And I, I just want to say that this app is $30. Uh, you know, you could, <laughs> if you already have an old iPad sitting around, like 30 bucks is a far cry from some of the other way more expensive controllers, such as the Ableton Push or whatever you're looking for to control Ableton Live remotely. Now, going back to the clip view, you can see that we have the ability to launch scenes and launch clips, of course. So here's like another scene. Right, that's obviously simple. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the browser. But something else you can do is if you long press on a clip, all of a sudden you have this interesting option menu. And I just wanna say that any controller should be at least as good at controlling Ableton Live as using my mouse on a laptop or I'm not gonna use it, right? In this situation, there are some things here that are just really snappy and really quick. You know, I wanna change the, the color of the clip. I wanna edit the clip, boom. Now look at this, we're in a clip editor view and we can see all the notes that we might want to use. We can fold the notes. We can use draw mode. There's there's the quantize menu. There's just so many things that I can edit very quickly. And maybe this makes a little bit more sense to me. And also I should say that if you're in a larger studio, this kind of control remotely is just so useful, not just for EQing, but just for almost any function that you can think of where your wired setup, okay, is kind of far from your speakers, right? So I'm gonna go back here I just want to say something else. There are actual looping controls that I haven't really gotten into yet, but that's really interesting, right? Something else that you can do is you can click this button and all of a sudden you can have two different split views. So right now we're looking at the same view, but let's just say on this view, we want to look at the volume, right? So now we have this clip launcher up at the top and then a volume control at the bottom. Right? 
right? Super awesome. So you can also look at panning and all this other stuff, or or I know that it might seem pretty s silly to have all those controls on different pages. You actually can combine them into what's called multi-control, where you can choose which one of those things are appearing, right? And of course, now you might be like, well, there's not enough room to see everything. Well, you can hit menu, and then you can actually zoom in and out of the tracks, right? So now, all of a sudden, I've got more view on this iPad, right? And if you have a big set, you can scroll actually back and forth between all those, okay? And full disclosure, one of the reasons that I'm diving so far into all these different control apps for iOS is that I'm making a live performance with Ableton Live online course. This is in addition to the courses that I already have available. But if you're interested in knowing more about when that online course actually comes out, if you're interested in performing your music on stage or in live streaming, there's never been a better time for you to set yourself apart from other musicians by stepping out there and actually performing. Okay, so if you're interested in all that, the uh, links are available up here and then down in the description and comments. Awesome. Let's get back to it. Now, I'm not affiliated in any way with this company, which, by the way, let's take a look at their website. They're called Zero Debug, which <laughs> I think for any software company is a very ambitious name <laughs> because there's been a lot of bugs leading up until now with Touchable Pro, and some folks have had um, some issues, but I'm here to tell you that this is about as snappy as possible, and I've been actually using Touchable Pro on stage with my band Papadocio and with my solo project Earthcry. It has been very good. It occasionally, I've had it actually restart itself once or twice, but it's so snappy, like the restart is so quick that I'm not really even worried about it, right? It's very, very fast, okay? So, it thus far has been really great for me. Now, the reason that I'm, I'm bringing this up is that I, I really think that folks are not aware of just how amazing this software is and how inexpensive it is for what it actually does. And so many people have old iOS devices that they could be using sitting around their houses. Like, it, it truly is amazing. Let's keep going. So I'm gonna go back to the larger view just for the ability to see what we're doing. And I'm gonna go over to the device view. So right here, you can see we're looking at a track where I have control over the actual devices, right? Let's go ahead and let's take a look at, maybe we'll take a look at the first track and I have a collision device. So if I go over to device view, you can see that I have control right here on the screen on the iPad over this instrument. And having the ability to actually touch the instrument to me is really, really awesome. So let's go ahead and solo that track out real quick. <laughs> now to me, interacting with Ableton devices all this time, I find myself really wanting to be able to interact with my hands and Using a mouse is great, and it's very accurate, and it's very fast. But sometimes, working in this way can really kind of just open up your mind a little bit. And as you can see over here on the device panel on the right-hand side, I can switch between the different devices. And you can see, check it out, they actually <laughs> show you how the LFO is moving over time, which is pretty cool. So they've created, you can see here's multiband compressor, here's the vocoder. They've actually created a way for you to interact They've made a graphical layout, sort of, like a UI, for each one of Ableton's native devices. And I think that is just so cool, right? All right, so moving on, I was telling you before about this view. So this is a view where you can actually play the instruments. And of course, now I'm on Wi-Fi mode. If I switch over to USB mode, it's super snappy. So for example, let's go ahead and play this. I'll work on this wavetable device. Right? You can still perform with this thing. Now, of course, this can't be this can't be velocity sensitive, right? It's just an iPad, right? It's just a, a touchable surface, no pun intended. <laughs> but you can see how fast it is. So maybe instead of using these notes to actually trigger notes on an instrument, you could also use this to trigger effects, right? You could use this to trigger events, okay? And, and those events would happen instantly and snappily if you're using, snappily, is that a word? if you're using the USB mode, right? So that is really, really awesome for live performance. And again, I've been using this for live performance for a while, okay? There are some different layouts that you can use if you don't want to use this isometric style. You can actually switch this over to some different views such as keys, so here's like a keys view, and it's still in this quantized mode for scale, so I could go to none and it would make all notes available to me. There's also pads, right? 
and then you can choose what MIDI channel those are coming down. So I think that's pretty amazing. And so you can also choose to look at the colors of the track. So if I switch over to Collision, now we can see that it's switched over to that color and so on, right? Really, really amazing stuff. And then we get into even more crazy stuff where you have an actual control app over here that you can control gestures and you can record those gestures and set those to different parameters in Ableton. I haven't dove into this too much, but what I have dove into and what I think might be one of the more exciting features of Touchable Pro is this last page. And so what we're looking at here is this is a page where I've got some custom layouts for control. Right now you can see I've got some of these pads here. And what I was using them for is to trigger effects inside of a, an instance of stutter edit on my master track. Now, you can though hit edit and all of a sudden you can add modules, okay? And these different modules are showing you different control areas or you can add controls, okay? So I could add a slider, for example, and the slider could be part of my control script. And then I could also add a rotary encoder and so on and so forth. And I can build myself a custom control area where these controls are doing the same thing every time. And so of course you can long press and you can change all kinds of things about this. You could change the color of it. You could change the size of it. You could change the parameter that it's controlling obviously by MIDI mapping, right? And once you get out of here, this control is just available to me forever, right? I got this slider and I got this, this knob and I could make an entire big control page that's totally customizable just for me. And then I can switch back to clip view or I could open this up in this view, right? So now I have a split screen, okay? So yeah, I know that this is a kind of quick video in, in terms of all the functionality that's available to you, but I just wanted to get this on everybody's radar because if more people are aware of Touchable Pro, I imagine that Zero Debug is going to spend a little bit more time on this and make some really interesting features available to us. Like one feature I noticed that is kind of crazy is that I'm gonna go out of this view. I noticed that if I hit menu over here, there's a little arrangement view button. And at the moment, in my actual set, we can see that there's clips here. There's no clips showing up in arrangement view and I, I'm not really sure why that is. Maybe because this is just a secret feature and they're developing it. But how cool would that be is, is, is if this worked in arrangement view as well. That would put this control app far above other controllers that are proprietary for Ableton such as Ableton Push, right? So hopefully, they continue to develop this. And hopefully some of you guys that are watching this video are like, wow, this is really interesting and really super useful, especially for you know in-studio control that is remote and then live performance. And some of you pick this up because maybe if enough people get this thing, they'll start updating it more, right? Yeah, anyway, uh, if any of you are watching that are from Zero Debug, get at me. I'd, I'd love to do an interview video with you and kind of talk about maybe what your long-term plans are with this thing, because I really like it. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time.